does the crisis in Ukraine imply? What could be India's role in this situation? Is a far bigger escalation on the cards? Well, to find answers to some of these questions, Northeast Live Editor in Chief Wasbir Hussain spoke to Dr. Swaran Singh, international affairs expert and professor JNU. Listen in. I'm now joined by Professor Swaran Singh from the Jawaharlal Nehru University, a well-known international affairs expert. Uh, Dr. Swaran Singh, welcome to Northeast Live. Russia has finally invaded Ukraine. Uh, now that has led to tremendous global reaction. What were the compulsions you think? Was it because uh, the Ukraine wanted to join NATO, wanted to move closer to the European Union? Do you think those are some of the reasons or do you think Russia is on an expansionist mode? Uh, I think here Russia was uh, over the last uh, 30 years uh, becoming increasingly concerned with NATO's eastward expansion and NATO has added from 12 to now 30 members, has expanded eastwards about 600 miles, almost knocking on the doors of Russia. And historically, if you look at uh, how Russia has ensured its national security culturally, from Tsarist Russia to Soviet Russia to now Russian Federation, they always wanted a buffer between Russia or Soviet Union and the Western NATO alliance. And that buffer was disappearing over a period of time and gradually with the talk of Ukraine uh, also joining NATO or European Union, uh, potentially NATO forces or uh, nuclear weapons could be deployed on the borders of Russia. And that had put Russia enormously uh, in terms of uh, anxiety about it. And over a period of time, I think the domestic politics of Ukraine also changed until 2014. There used to be pro-Russian leaders uh, uh, and you remember yes. enormous uh, the protests and the change of leadership and the new leader, President Zelensky now, is seen as pro-West. And so it's, right. it's a baggage of 30 years. And I think this was the kind of last straw on camel's neck as if uh, that now this whole uh, effort in 2014 to take over uh, Crimea, which was uh, originally part of uh, the Russian Federation or Russia, and given to the Ukraine as part of Soviet Union so, arrangement. So, Professor, Professor, you know, 2014, as you said, 2014, when the Moscow-friendly president in Ukraine was ousted, uh, you know, the Russia got jittery. And as you said, they, they annexed the Crimean Peninsula. They also backed an insurgency in the predominantly Russian-speaking Donbass area, Donbass region. So do you think it was a calculated, uh, you know, ploy by Russia to somehow regain its sway uh, over Ukraine? And, and that was the last of the former Soviet republics that was under some kind of Russian influence and they, and they were jittery that, that they're going to lose that and lose complete absence of control in Eastern Europe. See, even now, when you have uh, leaders like uh, Tokayev in Kazakhstan or Lukashenko in uh, Belarus, uh, President Putin has no problem with them because they are friendly to President Putin. It's only with the coming of Zelensky that now it looks like the comfort level between Kiev and Moscow are no longer there. And in the, it is in that context that Russia decided to have a direct control and annex Crimea, which is the naval base from where the entire Black Sea fleet of Russia operates. And it is trying to ensure that in case ultimately Ukraine also joins NATO, it is carving out a little more buffer of these two so-called people's republics of uh, Donetsk and the Luhansk. Exactly the way in Georgia, there was uh, a situation of South Ossetia and Abkhazia, or in uh, Moldova, in, uh, the Transnistria region, where again, there are peacekeepers of Russia in uh, uh, South Ossetia, Abkhazia, there are uh, uh, Russian forces right. there. So in that sense, it's a desire to create buffer between uh, right. know, what could potentially become no. NATO area. No. Now, we've seen a lot of reactions during the day today, uh, Dr. Swan saying the United States imposing sanctions. We just now, a short while ago, Boris Johnson of the United Kingdom uh, talking tough. Uh, and in this kind of a situation where an estimated 18,000 Indian students are stranded in Ukraine uh, and Prime Minister uh, is chairing a, a, a crucial uh, crisis uh, meeting on Ukraine, what do you think should be India's response? What do you see the days ahead? I think tomorrow uh, there is an online meeting of uh, NATO summit uh, and I think some 
outcome from there would should should stabilize the situation to me this looks like oil shock strategy for a certain limited period of time to make sure that new normal becomes acceptable to everybody and the russian forces then can stay as peacekeepers in that uh, eastern uh, you know sort of uh, region where ethnic russians are rebelling against kiev but as far as india is concerned india has enormous credentials of taking out indian citizens or even other people from very very difficult situations in the middle east earlier i understand that the air route is now suspended for a brief period of right. time so the routes that are now being uh, explored are either to you know allow indian students to move to the western cities like lviv and from there to romania and poland or you know today uh, president putin spoke to the turkish uh, president also uh, erdogan and they're trying to make sure that the the, the uh, as far as uh, the states remain open and access to outside world from black sea can be another possibility indian navy has done uh, such in middle east earlier of protecting citizens using its ships there uh, but i think i want to underline also the fact that uh, both ukraine and russia sees india as a friend so you know there's there is not a situation of panic unless which is a remote possibility that the escalation continues to grow in terms of vertical more violence happening on the ground i think there is a possibility that Absolutely. india would be able to protect its citizens now my final question to you uh, professor swaran singh uh, you know this is considered as the biggest uh, you know attack by one state on another in europe since the second world war uh, so do you think do you see an end to this escalation and do you think india has a huge role to play uh, i think uh, neither nato nor russia can afford escalation so far all nato operations after end of cold war have been in peripheral areas with smaller countries like uh, iraq libya syria and afghanistan uh, it has not really taken on a, a, a big power and we are talking here of a former superpower uh, so i think nato understands its limitations and will try to make sure that the new normal somehow is made acceptable and the certain concerns of putin are met uh, sanctions are a, a, a buzzword and that i think is a safe cover flag to say we are taking some response but nothing much as far as india is concerned india is not just democracy largest population big economy right. now non permanent member of un security council so there are expectations from india united states wants india to take their side and support them russia wants likewise and today ukraine ambassador spoke on national television wanting indian prime minister to intervene because of his friendship with president putin so in that sense expectations are there from india no doubt but Absolutely. india would stay india would stay on neutral position india will not be right. taking any side india would not be even imposing sanctions on anyone because that would be in taking side right if the escalation continues for a longer period of time then that neutrality could become a little costly for india absolutely absolutely today the ukrainian envoy in india has also shot prime minister modi's help uh, professor swaran singh there thank you very much indeed for speaking to notice life on a day when russia has invaded ukraine and leading to the biggest escalation in recent times thank you very much indeed.